Hello everybody and welcome back to another Hearthstone Brawl video. Uh, this particular brawl is pretty interesting. I've seen some interesting ideas come up. Uh, the reason I wanted to release a video is because I don't normally enjoy the brawls beyond um, picking up the free pack or whatever or you know just a little bit of experimentation but every now and then there's a brawl that has pretty immense replay value. I've been playing this one quite a bit just because not only to get the various rewards even though they're only cosmetic but also because I got the quest to do to win five brawls. As you can see I've got my deck tracker up on screen just to show you that it's currently on a 10 and 0 win streak. Um, when I first put the deck together the deck tracker was not tracking it because um, I guess it doesn't do that when you're doing brawls. Um, but uh, once it figured out enough of the deck composition, uh, I guess it started to. So um, I probably before it started tracking wins, I probably had like another 10 victories and maybe one loss. I'm literally saying I think I've just lost one game with this deck. And uh, so I wanted to showcase it, play a few games for you, show you what it's about. Um, as you can see, there's lots of minions that basically, if they're damaged, or if they're killed, it's actually beneficial to me. I also have Commanding Shout, um, times like when you're playing like a Raging Morgan, for example, it's a good way to make sure he doesn't actually get killed. Um, same thing with like the Blood Full of Brave and the Grim Patrons. Um, the deck works really well, it's got a really nice curve. Um, it's got a couple of uh, the fiery war axes in it. We're basically going to mulligan strictly for one drop. Since we have the coin, we could abide a two drop, but things like the armor smith and the uh, frothing berserker, these are things that come into play like once other minions are already on board. You don't want them taking all of the hits. So I'm tempted to keep the fiery war axe, um, but we do really want. No, I guess it doesn't matter. I guess I'm getting kind of cocky because I'm on a 10 and 0 win streak for sure. Uh, like I said, I believe it's longer than that. All right, New, Rub New Ruby and Egg is a good first drop. Commanding Shout's pretty bad to have at this point because we actually want the Egg to die, for example. All right. Against another warrior was the one game I had that was challenging. I don't think that was the one game I lost. I don't. I actually don't remember the circumstances of the one game that I lost. Because there's been so many that I've been winning. All right, so I could just play the the dragon egg here and save the coin for a bit later. That's not a bad idea. Um. Trying not to overthink this. Alright, well, I guess a 4 4 is better than two, two ones, And that's assuming it takes all hits, which isn't a guarantee, but here we go. Turn 1 4 4. That's not a bad thing. And then we'll have other minions, such as the Dragon Egg, that can, like, absorb and help make sure this stays alive, basically. Alright, so here what I could do. Like if he had popped the egg and he had a 4-4, I could say Commanding Shout. Um, I don't think it's the best idea, so I'm just going to play a 2-drop to stay on curve. Obviously the Dragon Egg would potentially be better, but I'm just trying to stay on curve. And basically the idea is because we're a warrior, we can armor up. We've got the armor smith, so as Rag grows larger and larger, it's possible that you just basically become invincible more or less. I guess pops, and that's unfortunate. Alright. Now, if I played the Armorsmith here, it'd kind of be a waste. I'd really like her commanding shout, but. Yeah, unfortunately. Alright, well, the opponent's already half dead, so as you can see. Alright, that's good. As long as it doesn't kill the Berserker. Good. Good. So yeah, the opponent's already at half health and we're actually above starting health. We have a better board presence. Um, for now anyways. Uh, 
the we did have a bad draw here with the two commanding <laughs> shouts. It's time for a little blow. So looks like we're pretty much on the same page here as far as oh, what's going on here. Execute. Yeah, I did. I the other warrior I met before was more of like a controlling guy. Alright, well, commanding shout wouldn't be of any use here, so we're just gonna do the warbot and the fiery war axe. Battle detected. I'm tempted to just go face here. Um, however, I'm gonna take out the thing with the most health just because we don't want his minion's health absorbing the Ragnaros hits. And that's another, right here what you just saw is another advantage of the Dragon Egg. It can produce another minion that will get killed for pretty easily, which gives him higher power to throw at your opponent next turn. So, there's a nice synergy. The health that your minions have basically stop you from taking damage. Alright, see, that's a three health minion for one mana. That's very efficient as far as absorb units. Alright, the Berserker is killed. Very good. Alright, Raging Morgan along with... Armor up seems good enough. Actually, because I've got the Raging Morgan, I'm thinking I'm going to command him Shout. That way I'll have a 4-1 Wind Fury. Well, not a 4-1 Wind Fury, but the chances are... Yeah, I like that idea. Unfortunately, it means I won't get any uh, dragons off the egg, but... We're basically going for lethal. For that reason, I'm just going to hit his face. That way, if we draw the other fiery war axe. Alright. So, chances are he would want to swing the axe to my face. That'll kill my minions. And then his warbot can pick up the dragon. He needs to be putting health on the ground, though, because Rag's going to have six hits coming in. And he's only got six, so he's like a guaranteed dusty. death right now. Alright, so now he's going to swing the axe at my face. Still not going to be good enough, because then he'll only have five health here. Ten. Alright. Oh, it's strange to me that he did it that way. That might be right, though. I don't know. Okay, so Rag could just potentially kill him out. Not likely, but it's possible. Alright, he killed the Berserker, that's good, but it's bad that now his Ragnaros is going to hit us for stronger. Oh, there we go, perfect. Lots of absorption. Both of these minions produce other minions, which gives Ragnaros more targets, which dilutes his uh, likelihood of hitting us. There we go. The only downside to Grim Patron is it's annoying to listen to. I actually stopped playing uh, Hearthstone just before Blackrock Mountain, so I wasn't actually around for the Grim Patron abuse and uh, everybody get in here spam. So this is a new form of annoyance for me. It's uh, probably trip down memory lane for many of you. All right, so you, as you can see, uh, that was more or less a mirror match. Um, the fact that he was running executes is why he lost. Um, you just got to play aggressively. Um, in fact, because of the need for aggression here, the Acolyte of Pain in my deck almost sometimes seems like it's not the best idea. But otherwise, I wouldn't have much in the way of three drops, so that's what it's there for. But yeah, because of the deck's curve, like, there's almost... I usually win right as I'm emptying my hand, unless I do get an Acolyte of Pain. Um, but the deeper you get in your deck, the more options you have, the greater your chance to find like the Armor Smith and the Frothing Berserker, for example. Um, the Axe Flinger, the Bloodhoof Brave, the Grim Patron, you know. It curves nicely. It's got a lot to play Geras in the beginning. Versus Is that the guy we just played? He's not. <laughs> we don't have a one drop, so I gotta throw it all away. It's pretty imperative that you pay on curve. Uh, that way you can start absorbing the Ragnaros hits to your face and also start uh, pushing back against your opponent. 
So here, if we're lucky enough for the hag to take both hits, it's turn one, two, two ones. We put our uh, opponent under great pressure. And if not, if it only hits once, we can rampage and we can kill other stuff and make even more dragons. Okay, so we get two two ones. That's not bad at all. And we ramp him up to have power of three, which makes him more likely to kill the opponent's stuff. So uh, right away, we're uh, off to the races here, which is fantastic. Especially since we did have a high curve draw, which is not good. Yeah, he gets his card. He absorbs two hits. It's unfortunate for us, but... Alright, that's... Bad a weak play. Playing off curve, but I don't really have much choice. Hopefully the Warbot does get hurt, but not killed. So I can have a Rampage target, because otherwise I have nothing to do next turn. Yet. Oh dear. Two damage to him. <laughs> That's awesome. Alright, so let's actually commanding shout here. And we'll save the rampage for next turn. Draw a card, maybe we'll get a one drop. We did. That's excellent. Especially since the commanding shot. Uh, yeah. So I will go ahead and do that. Make that sacrifice. Because it doesn't kill our minions. And a rag. We absorbed all but one rag hit, which is great. So that was the first time I've actually seen Commanding Shout be that significant of a play. Usually it's just for drawing another card and keeping a Raging Worgen alive. Alright, so Rampage is plus three, plus three? Yeah. So if he does get the Devil Sword, we can just... Alright, so we've got a pair of Rampages. I'm just going to go for Lethal here. I could do the Bloodhoof Brave, but I've already got a Grim Patron, and we've got the initiative, so let's just do this. <laughs> and both live, that's awesome. What will he do? He needs to play a taunt at the very least. Even a blood hoof brave might not save him because if Rag gets him with one hit, I just win. There we go. Alright, so that's 12 consecutive wins as far as my deck tracker knows. Alright, we'll play one more. I like uh, making these types of videos with three games just to give uh, a fair cross-section. <sighs> Whoops. Next time I clicked off. Nobody wants to face this deck. Alrighty, a worthy opponent. Well, good. I was kind of looking for one of those. Garrosh versus Garrosh. Victory! Potential Garrosh. mirror matchup. All right, we go Bring first. We've got the dragon egg. That's very good. Then we got the ruin egg, runic egg, which I don't necessarily want to play right away, but we do not have a two drop, and there was no way I was going to keep commanding shot when the only minions I have are ones that I want to be able to accept the damage. Because that's the problem, right? Like, if you have Commanding Shout active, then, like, the last damage to an Acolyte of Pain for... That's very good. The last damage to an Acolyte of Pain will not draw you a card. The last damage to, like, a Runic Egg will not draw you a card. The last damage to a Dragon Egg won't actually produce a Dragon. So, <clears throat> Commanding Shout can backfire in the way. Okay, so he doesn't actually get hit at all, which is nice, because that means we can actually limit him to a single dragon, which is good. Right, it's unfortunate that our dragon got killed, but we're going to expose. Okay. So we take on two... Why didn't we take on two? He killed both my dragons just now. Huh, very bizarre. I'm yeah, that doesn't do anything, buddy. Oh. <laughs> okay, well, one of his dragons got killed. That's quite good. 
Um, playing just a worgen here would kind of be bad because Ragnaros is already up to seven. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop these instead. And I'm not worried about his dragon killing these, so I'll let him do... Well, no, this Strike. stops him from doing two to me and it heals me for one. Increases the chances these get popped, etc. Et so I, I do enjoy that outcome. Alright, so four we have the option of Wet War Axe and Berserker, which is nice. Yeah, Ragnaros grows through to be quite good. Wow. Why would he give me that? Alright, so hopefully three hits come so that my axe just breaks it and I go through. Yeah, I don't think this is a good card in this particular brawl, especially once Ragnaros has already grown to this big. Wow! That's awesome. <clears throat> I was gonna say, this is almost certain to, like, be favorable for me. Who you want me kill? Uh, maybe hitting with the Worgen there would have been a good idea. I don't know. Should have thought more about that turn. Oh, wow. Alright, well, he's got 12 bearing down on him, so let's see what happens here. My blade be yeah, he's almost certain to die. So this is pretty much a guarantee here. Oh yeah, especially if I make it to where my guy can't even die. That's awesome. Yeah, let's go ahead and go face, because I can't imagine any reason not to. Yeah, I was pretty much guaranteed to walk away with a 5-1 here, so... In fact, the only reason to let the Frothing Berserker die would have been to... Throw Ragnaros. Ah, and there we have it. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, this brawl is particularly well. I should say this deck is particularly fun. Um, its win rate is just through the roof, so that's awesome. Wanted to share it with you guys. Hope you enjoy the rest of the Fire Midsummer Fire Festival, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.